Well, what a wonderful privilege and pleasure it is to come to the house of God on the Sabbath day. Put your hands up if you agree with me. Well, you're listening now, that's good. Can you hear me, Bev? Are you sure? Can any, everybody else hear me? I don't want anyone to miss out what we're saying here this morning. This sermon's been on and off this week. You've got no idea. <laughs> but um, I'll do my best. And um, I wondered what I would preach about, as I always do, as I've said to you before, the hardest thing about preaching a sermon is to get a topic or to, to, you know, to focus in on one idea. And so I said to the Lord, if you want me to preach, give me an idea. The last time I said that, he put the word heart. And so last time you heard the sermon on the heart. This time he put the word footstep. Footstep. Footprint. I want today to be able to interchange those two words, footprint and footstep. I want them to, eat, to, to mean the same. The dictionary says that they are print made by the foot. Footprint. A footstep. I want to just expand that meaning just a little bit today. A traceable line of movement. When you go into the national parks, and you will probably have seen, many of you would have seen this sign, take only photographs and leave only footprints. Everybody leaves footprints, a traceable line of movement, a line of action or intention that can be followed by others. That's the definition of footprint, footstep, today, according to my dictionary. Let's just bow our heads. Uh, Father, we pause just a moment longer to plead just a little bit more for your blessing today as we review some things which are important to us. Amen. Well, who was the first person that we know in the Bible that left footprints? I think it might have been Enoch. Enoch, we're told, used to walk all throughout the countryside and he used to go on to journeys into the countryside and that he was our first evangelist. He used to preach. And what do we know about him was that he walked with God. He made the first footprints leading to heaven. Then there was Abraham. Abraham was nobody in the Ur of Chaldees until such time as the Lord said, Go, get your house together and leave. And from the Ur of the Chaldees, he went up into the northwest of the country to Haran. And in Haran, the Lord again said to him, Go into the land where I will show you. Abraham went where he didn't know where he was going. Does that make a lot of sense to you these days? You must know where you're going. All that Abraham knew was that he was going to the land of Canaan. And the Lord led him. And he made footsteps for hundreds of miles as he travelled across the countries between Ur and Haran and Haran and the land of Canaan. His footprints were such that he is known as the father of the faithful. Maybe his footprints as he walked up the hill to sacrifice his son Isaac appeared on the very same paths that Jesus may have taken centuries later. Abraham left his footprints and the evidence of his presence all over the land of Canaan. Jacob left footprints on his way to Haran. Look at the footprint he left at Hebron, where he slept with a stone for his pillar. And he had that experience with God of the ladder going up and down. And he went over to, to, to Haran and lived with his relatives there for all those 14 plus years, working for those uh, daughters, those the girls, those ones who became his wife. And then he made more footprints as he came back to the land of Canaan. 
Think of the footprints that the young Joseph may have left as he walked over the hill uh, toward Egypt with the Ishmaelites who now owned him. Think of how he made up his mind that he would continue to follow, come what may, he would continue to follow the God of his father. And we all know that Joseph's footprints led to greatness and his footprints were seen all over Egypt. Strange that Joseph never ever walked again or left any more footprints in his homeland. <clears throat> I can imagine that all around Moses' uh, mother's and father's house there were little footprints of feet as Moses ran around that house and played. He left his footprints around the house of his parents. He left his footprints all over Egypt as for 40 years he lived in the courts of Pharaoh. And then he took another journey and went uh, hundreds of miles away to the land of Midian and he left footprints all the way across there. God didn't lose track of him. He left footprints all over the land of Midian in, in 40 years looking after the sheep belonging to his father-in-law. And then his footsteps brought him back to Egypt. Think of the footsteps that they, he and the children of Israel left in the bottom of the Red Sea when they crossed it over. We told that they crossed over in dry land. They must have left footprints. They were being led by God. All through the desert for 40 years they went. Moses never ever left a footprint in the promised land. But in his life, his footprints led, as Enoch did, to heaven. Think of Ruth. Uh, not a Palestinian, not a Hebrew. But think of her footprints as she followed Naomi back to the land of Canaan from her own land. Think of her determination to serve the God that she had come to know through Naomi and her sons. Think of Samuel, little feet in the temple. It wasn't usual for people to get into the temple until they were about 22 years old. But he went in as a little child. Think of the little pitter-patter of feet there must have been through the temple in those early years. And Samuel, I think, left his footprints on Israel. For later on, he became their high priest, he became their prophet became the judge. And then there was David. We could um, spend many minutes, hours perhaps, talking about the footsteps that David left, looking after his father's sheep out in the countryside. Think of the scuffings of feet there must have been on the dirt as he killed a lion, as he killed a bear. Think of his footprints as he went to his brothers who were in the army serving with Saul. I wonder whether his footprints on the base on the bottom of the brook are still there where he went across to meet Goliath, where he picked up those stones and slew that giant. Think of the footprints that Saul followed when he was chasing David through the desert, trying to kill him. Think of the put footprints that um, David left as he fled uh, from the chasing Saul. Think of his footprints in the city of Ziklag in a foreign country. His footprints led to war, but you remember he had to go back his footprints were not going to be seen in that war with the Philistines against the Hebrews. Think of Elijah, <clears throat> the travelling prophet, the travelling teacher. He left footprints around Brook Cherith. And then he walked across to the widow of Zarephath, maybe over 100 miles away. And... Uh, his footprints led to that place where he spent some time 
caring and being cared for by that widow of Zarephath. Uh, then we can see his footprints coming back to the land of Canaan. And uh, I wonder uh, how many footprints he left as he was going up onto the Mount Carmel. And how many footprints he left as he circled around the sacrifice of his opponents, making sure that they didn't put a light under their sacrifice. And then the footprints as he stood and prayed over his own sacrifice and how the Lord showed that day whom those people should serve. The only time Ahab ever followed the right footsteps, I think, was when he followed the footsteps of Elijah going back to his home when the wind and the rain came at the end of that experience. And then Elijah's footprints led him down to the desert in the south to be lost in the sands there in time. And eventually he came back and he walked with Elijah, with Elisha for a while. And we all know how Elisha followed in the footsteps of Elijah and eventually received twice his blessing. And Elijah was a great man of God. And then there was Elisha, of course, who followed in the footsteps of Elijah and he also became a well-known and a good prophet of God. Think of Daniel. I wonder if he walked to Babylon or whether as a captive he had to walk to Babylon, hundreds of miles. There were footprints left by many of those Hebrews as they went across to Babylon, leaving the promised land as captives. And with him, of course, were three worthies that we know about, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. They also left footprints there. And remember the footprints that they would have left on the plain of Shinar and in the very furnace where they were supposed to be burned. Remember they were seen there by the king walking with a fourth person uh, who he thought was God himself. Yes, those people left footprints. Those people walked in the direction of God. Think of Esther. <sighs> Esther left her footprints in the palace at Babylon. She accepted God's will no matter what the personal danger was to her. She was dedicated to doing what she could to save the people of the Hebrews. And going back to our original meaning of footprints, remember what I said, according to me, a line of action or intention that can be followed by others. John the Baptist would have led a lot of footprints a lot of his footprints would not have been seen because they would have been in water. What did John the Baptist do? He went about baptising people, didn't he? And uh, he lived his life in the desert, uh, preaching and teaching and preparing the way of the Lord. And he stood next to Jesus in the Jordan River and the two of them were making footprints together which will never be seen but the meaning of which can be very, very clear to us. And then the footprints that John the Baptist made as he led himself virtually to his own death. Willingly, he went to persecution for his God, for Jesus, who he was there to prepare the way for. And Jesus eventually came and uh, I, I, I uh, think of uh, the, uh, the footprints that Jesus must have left as he was in the temple asking the scholars the questions that they couldn't answer. And then the footprints that he left as he went back to his home of Nazareth. And I wonder whether Jesus before that had even left footprints on the way to Egypt as a little child. 
We don't really know how old he was when he went to Egypt. But one thing we can be sure of, he would have left footprints coming back from Egypt to Canaan. And as he grew in um, favour with God and man, Jesus left footprints all over his hometown. He left footprints in the temple. He left footprints at the Jordan. He left footprints in the desert when he spent 40 days and nights there being tempted of the devil. He then walked and left footprints with his disciples to many, many places, to many, many villages, on so many roads and pathways as an itinerant preacher. Probably Jesus left more footprints than anyone else that we know of in the Bible. Then I think of the footprints that he must have left as with his disciples he went to the Garden of Gethsemane. Think of the footprints that Jesus would have left in the Garden of Gethsemane. Think of the print that he would have left in the Garden of Gethsemane when he fell on his face, asking his father to relieve him of this tremendous burden that he had. Think of the footprints that Jesus would have left as he went into the judgment hall, as he went to see the high priest, as he went to see Pilate, as he went to see Herod, he left footprints on all these little journeys. Did, in fact, he walk in the footsteps of Abraham as he climbed to Mount Calvary? Because that was where Abraham had sacrificed his son Isaac. Not literally, but he had, in fact, mentally sacrificed his son Isaac. And Jesus, walking up those paths to Calvary, probably walked in the very same dirt hundreds of years later and left footprints in exactly the same place as Abraham. Jesus left no footprints on his way to the tomb for he was carried that short distance. But he left footprints after he came out of the tomb and they were followed and seen by his disciples and many others, again preaching and teaching the principle of truth and instructing his disciples in what they were to do after he left. There are no more footprints to be found on the earth of Jesus since then. They were his last footprints on this earth. But he's left us all these examples of footprints and intentions and directions of people that we, in 2008, can see and follow. And we can see these footprints in this book and in other books that we have that tell us of those people. Peter left footprints with Jesus on the lake. Did you ever think of them leaving footprints on the water? What footprint can you see from Simon Peter saying to the Lord, O oh Lord, save me? Think of the footprints that Jesus and Peter left on the lake as they went back into the boat. But Peter knew that he could only have safety through Jesus. And that could be a very good lesson. For us. Think of the footprints that all the disciples would have made as they spread out with, in missionary endeavour with the knowledge of the gospel of salvation. Some we hear even went as far as India. And these were the days, of course, when most travelling was done by foot. Think of Paul's footsteps as he went to Damascus. Think of the mess of footpaths, footprints he must have left on the sand as he was dazzled by that light. And I wonder if there's any difference in the footsteps before that place and after that place when he went to Damascus and then eventually into the wilderness to be taught 
by Jesus himself. And the hundreds, the thousands of miles that Paul would have travelled around in his missionary endeavour and in his uh, life of missionary work. Think of people like Luther, uh, Wesley, Zwingli, and there are a host of other names that we could tell. The footprints that they left in serving their Jesus and spreading the truth as they knew it and understood it from the Bible. Did Ellen White leave any footprints? Ellen White left footprints all over Australia. Perhaps not all over Australia, but she left a lot of footprints around the places where she lived on the eastern coast of Australia. And if it wasn't that when they were walking through uh, the countryside that she saw that furrow where now Avondale is situated. And, and maybe Ellen White's footsteps might still be thought to be around the property there at Avondale. What other footprints would she have left? She went to Europe, she went to South Africa and she went to many, many places in North America. She left footprints in the books that she wrote. She wrote more uh, spiritual books than anybody else ever in our organisation. And her footprints can be seen in her writings. And she herself said that her writings were to lead people to Jesus Christ. There are the footprints of Ellen White. Well... There are so many footprints that we can see in history. There are so many directions that we can follow. When we think of a lot of the other famous people of the world, Winston Churchill, Hitler, oh, some of those early popes, they left footprints too. There are footprints that we can see that go in all directions. Whose footprints are you going to follow? Are you going to follow the footprints of the old worthies of the Bible? Are you going to try and follow the footprints of Jesus? Are you going to try and follow his instructions? Are you going to try and be faithful like Abraham? For that's one of his greatest footsteps. He is known as the father of the faithful. Would you like to become meek like Moses? Think of the footsteps up and down that Mount Sinai. Not once, but twice, probably more. The meekest man. He led the children of Israel all over uh, that part of Arabia, uh, that part of the Middle East, but he never put footprints in the promised land. Will you follow Jesus as resolutely as Ruth followed es uh, Esther? As Esther, well, on who am I talking about? Ruth followed Naomi. Would you be as resolute in your direction in following Christ as she was? She was mentioned in the lineage of Christ. Would you follow in the footsteps of David by admitting your sin and asking for forgiveness? For that was his great strength. Will you follow in the footsteps of Jesus as the Saviour? Would you help to spread the news of his gospel as you follow his footsteps of sacrifice? Would you like to become a an active missionary like Paul, would you like to follow his footsteps into many foreign countries? Think of all the problems that he faced. Maybe his, his footsteps would be good to follow. Would you like to follow in the footsteps of John the Baptist in some way? John the Baptist's footsteps led to preparation for Jesus' first coming. Have you thought that 
you might be able to follow John the Baptist's footsteps in preparation for Jesus' second coming. This is a privilege and a wonderful opportunity that we have. The Lord has wisely given us all these opportunities of following the movements and intentions of lots of people. And we can decide which footsteps we follow. Take heed to the direction you take. Four twenty eight. shall sorrow no more, not a sigh for the blessing of rest in the sweet by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet our bountiful Father above, we will offer a tribute of praise for the glorious gift of his love and the blessings that hallow our days in the sweet by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful shore. O oh Lord God in heaven, just a moment more in your presence in this sanctuary today. We thank you for the footprints that you show us of your worthies, of your representatives, your workers, your people, those who have done your bidding throughout history. Lord, may we follow the direction that so many of these people took. May the footprints that we follow lead us into Canaan. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.